go through the rigor of flop, turn, and river. Up comes eight, That's eight, safe. Queen. Easy. It is only two best. running Queens, cards now eight. that will prevent Simon Trumper from doubling up. This will be a very good double up for Simon Trumper. Full house. He picked his moment well. He waited for the opportunity. Ken Leonard figured he had to take the chance to knock out a player. As a result, he's doubled him up. And Simon Trumper could be dangerous again. Looking at the poker ladder, Ken Leonard did have two pair there, the two pair on the board, but Simon Trumper's full house a long way above it. Raise of 3,600 pass. <coughs> pass. It's been 16 <laughs> plus 2 for Iana with the ace jack, and Trumper has a real holding here. <coughs> and a real decision. So Simon has just got to think, well, he didn't set me all in. If he had a weak hand, would he not set me all in? Do I want to play with King Ten of Hearts? I, I think one of Trumper's problems is that after Ken Leonard called him with the seven deuce earlier, he's thinking that 5,100, which is what he'd have for the next round, isn't really enough to make anybody fold anyway. Will you look at this, oh. Jesse? He's flat calling. That is a very creative move. Simon Trumper is leaving himself chips. It, it's, it's, it has to be stop and go, Vicky. He's, I mean, it, there is no way that he can get rid of this on the flop, no matter what comes. I, I, mean, I don't think. I mean, I just can't imagine. I mean. But with 8,800 in the pot, more if Barney Boatman calls. 2300 is not going to scare Simon Ian away. Well, it's 2000 to Barney, but he's only got 11,000. I mean, and I think Barney's thinking there's a huge chance that he can fold here and make about $5,000 if Trumper gets knocked out. Trumper's very low. Well, look at this. Call him. Simon Trumper has got to move all in. He has done, Simon but of course, it's going to be a quick call from Simon Ian with aces. Yeah, but queen, queen. And what Simon Trumper is going to need cool. is for the online Swedish qualifier to make two pair. Well, give him two pair. Simon Trumper's all in. As you say, he needs a 10. He needs a jack. <coughs> Ian is ahead. That's no help. Trumper has hung around for a long time. He needs to catch a card now. Another queen. It's no good. Aces and queens for Simon Ian are going to knock out Simon Trumper. That Swedish kid was the fly buzzing in his ear all night. And he's finally having to buzz off. Unlucky Simon. I mean, at one stage, I was uh, very much short stacked. Um, so I'm quite proud that I managed to survive this long. I made a judgment call on the last hand and flopped a pair with a straight draw. And that's as good as you're going to get when you're that, you know, that short stack. Half the table is gone. Just four players remain in this heat of the party poker late night poker masters. Pass. 124 hands they've played. David Toy making a very big raise here. He's found a pair of fours and Barney Boatman's moved all in with the two over cards. And it's a big re-raise. It's about 11,000 more. What is David Ty gonna do about this? Well, he wants to know how much it is. That's first, and Ty is probably the one player at the table, uh -huh. Vicky, who has 16. enough chips to take a gamble at Barney. I, I, I think it's about 11,000 more. If David Ty makes this call and loses, he will be down at the bottom of the pack. He may be thinking, is Boatman bluffing me? I look like a tight player. Is he trying to take me off? I do have a pair. The interesting thing is that Ty is getting almost exactly two to one his money, but he's given it up. He's given it up. He was just about priced in, but Boatman, with that very strong move, has collected a nice pot and overtaken Ken Leonard for chips. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those pots where you get out of your seat to rake in the chips. All Barney's chips were in the center. He's getting them back. And uh, Ty was pretty close to calling because looking at the chip leaderboard right now, how tight is it between these four? 
We're going to see into the mind of someone who's been there, done that, and seen it. Simon Trumper just off the table in fifth. He picked up $15,000 and now joining us. Simon, who do you think is playing the best poker? Simon Ian. Call. I called him uh, right from the beginning. I thought he would win. I was hoping Rise we'd be end up uh, heads up, but it didn't plan out that way. And uh, I think he'll win it. Minimum raise here from Ian in the big blind. Barney has just limped. And Barney, not that strong a holding. And I think it's a re-raise. He's caught something. Quick fold from Ian, who was just <laughs> pumping up slowly with the 5-6. Ian was at it, and Barney was on it like a hobo. You know, it doesn't matter where we go in the world as players now. The World Series, WPT, there's something very, very special about late night poker. It's not just the name, it's the place, it's the people. And uh, as long as they keep doing it, as long as they keep asking me, you can't keep me away from late night poker because it is, this is poker. This is where it all started. Welcome back. Four left in this late night poker masters. Ken has decided to bang and bash. Pass. A massive bet. Oh, Barney Boatman's asked for a count, and that's why. Wow. Well, let me tell you, Jesse, four-handed, ace-10 plays as well as ace-king, in my opinion. And this could be a great call by Barney Boatman. It's still a pressure call. Don't forget, there's a massive difference. 100,000 for the winner, 20,000 for the fourth. But this could be the hand that catapults Barney Boatman into a massive chip lead. All in. He's, He's done it! Wow! <laughs> How bad does Can Barney Boatman want to win this? Ace, He's ace. willing to go all in with the ace-10 ace after ace Leonard ten. has set himself in. He put all his money in, his whole tournament on the line, <laughs> on feeling, Simon, and he's right so far. Fantastic call there by Barney Boatman. And let me tell you, David Ty passed the an eight. There are only two eights left in the deck. Boatman deserves ten, this, six, and he's going to get it. Barney flops a pair of tens. Let's see the turn. Possible queen for a split. Yeah, it's queen for a split. Ken yeah. Leonard already shaking hands. He can't believe Barney called. Six. Ken is our fourth place Well, finish. that's what makes champions. Barney Boatman, he went with his gut instinct, and he made a phenomenal call. The plan was to get decent cards, and that plan went definitely wrong. Uh, I felt I was playing good and had the table under control. But then the blinds went up, and yeah, my cards didn't improve. I'm very disappointed. Late night poker is always something extra, so I really wanted to win more than ever, but not this time. Maybe next time. Party poker at Late Night Poker Masters, three-way at the final table. And Barney Boatman. You get the feeling, Simon, that this is all of a sudden Barney Boatman's tournament to lose or yep. to win. Well. Well, here's a hand to raise with, that's for sure. Looking across at David Ty's stack, he wants to raise enough that would make David Ty pot committed if he comes raise over the to top. 6, I call. Call. Just a call here from Simon Ina. Oh, and he's got ace nine of diamonds. It was a call with no thought whatsoever, Simon. Will that send alarm bells ringing in Barney's head? Oh, David Ty's got an ace as well. Well, let me tell you, if Simon Ina hadn't flat called, David Ty would have moved in with his ace seven. That's for sure. Ty's only got 13,000 back. He, there's no way he can really raise enough to make either player pass. It's a clear play. fold. It's a clear fold. When the two chip leaders oh, take each other on, oh, why on earth <laughs> do you want to get involved? Just pass the hand and hope they both flop something, and all of a sudden you're in uh, second place and you've got $50,000 in the bank. Well said. Here's the flop. Boatman having eyes for Ian now. And, and this could be Simon Ian. Yeah, it depends how Simon plays it. Well, he'd have been better off checking here, but he's going to represent it. That's and if uh, there's two undercards to those eights, if Barney Boatman decides he has not got a nine because he would have checked the flop, he may push all his chips in here. It's pretty much a cold deck for Barney Boatman. One overcard to the eights, that's the nine, and that's all. And what is going through Barney?